You guys know I've been working on my own post-installation script that I call DTOS. It's basically DT's desktop environment, where if you guys are running Arch Linux or Arch Linux-based distribution like Manjaro, Arco, Endeavor, you should be able to run the DTOS post-installation script and get my Xmonad desktop environment, complete with my Xmo bar configured exactly the way you see it on screen right now with all the widgets, with the system tray, this is Trayer here, and the script that controls Trayer and dynamically adjust the size. You'll get my Alacrity Terminal with my random shell color scripts program. Uh, you'll get Fish, Bash, and ZSH all installed, and you get to choose which one will be your default user shell. You'll also, of course, get Doom Emacs. Doom Emacs is uh, very important. It's an integral part of DT's desktop. And I've been working on this DTOS script for a few months now, but really uh, for a long time, I kind of had to put it on the back burner because I, I would work on it for a few days and then things would come up in life. And of course, my primary job is not working on DTOS. My primary job job is actually making these videos that you guys love about Linux and free and open source software. So I obviously I can't shirk my responsibilities as far as making video content to sit around, you know, working on my DTOS bash script. But here in the last week, week and a half, I've really put a lot of work in it because this thing needs to be publicly released. It's time. You guys want it and I'm ready to give it to you guys. And honestly, I think it's to the point now we're ready for a public beta. I think we could go ahead and go ahead and get this thing out there. But I know it's going to be, again, kind of a public beta. There's going to be errors. There's going to be bugs. But the great thing is if I release it to the public, you guys can help me find those bugs. You guys can report those bugs and we can get them quickly fixed. Also, you guys can also help me just improve the script. I'm sure you guys are going to have plenty of recommendations on things I could do better in the script or maybe features to add. One of the things with this script is the more I worked on it, the more I came up with new ideas. I, I kept adding things to the script, kept adding new things, new things. And I realized if I kept doing that, I would never get this to the point of actually being ready for a release. Hence, you know, the other day I just decided, you know what, it's time. I don't care. I know it's not exactly where I want it, but it's time to go ahead and put this thing out there. So what I'm going to do here first, I'm going to share with you guys the script in its current state. And then I'm going to spin up a VM. We'll spin up a VM of Manjaro and actually see if this script installs correctly. So DTOS is essentially a bash script. Now I wrote it in org mode in Emacs, but org mode you can do literate programming where in org mode you can have these source code blocks and you can specify the language that this should output to. So you see source code uh, is bash, begin source, in source. So everything inside this source code block is bash. And what it does is it writes all of this to a specific file that I tell it to. I told it to write it to a uh, file on my system called DTOS dot sh so my readme.org is really the file that i work on it's really the script it's just at the end of it i run a, a key binding in my case i do space m capital b and what it does is it writes all these source code blocks over to dtos dot sh it writes the the shell file for me but the great thing is having the readme you know the readme is actually going to be the readme on my gitlab page so it actually makes you guys makes it easier for you guys to actually read the script because the readme of course is going to have all these comments that the actual bash script itself will not have so let's read quickly through each section of the DTOS script. The very first section is about DTOS. Now, this is not part of the bash script. This is just comments in the readme itself. It just tells you exactly what DTOS is. It's an installation script that will deploy my Xmonad configs, my Emacs config, as well as various other programs that are associated with my desktop environment. So you're going to get Xmonad, Xmobar, Doom Emacs, Fish, and all the other programs that you guys often see on my videos, the shell color scripts, all of that. The next section is, uh, this was mainly for me, features to add in the future. And I had a very long list of features I was trying to add to this script. And I eventually got through all of them. Uh, the one I was working on today was I wanted a feature where if we ask the user if they want the fish shell as their default user shell. Because I wanted to make sure that Bash, ZSH, and Fish, all three of those shells, are installed on the system. And then I want the user to choose which one they want to be the default user shell. Now in Arch Linux, Bash 
bash is almost always going to be the default system shell, but the user shell really could be anything. You know, I'll leave that up to the user. Me personally, I like fish as my default user shell, but I don't want to force it on people, so I'll let you guys choose if you want fish or not. And then we actually get the start of the bash script itself. This is just comments, uh, nothing to see here. Dependencies, the script does rely on the dialog program. Dialog basically allows you to create uh, graphical message boxes inside the command line or a terminal. So you do need dialog installed. And that's very important because not every uh, Linux system is going to have the dialog program installed out of the box. Some will, some won't. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to make sure that the script checks if dialog is installed. And if it's not, it will install it for you. Then the next section is this uh, bit of bash here that basically checks what your ID user number is. And if your ID user zero, that means you're the root user. You are not allowed to run this as root. So your ID, your user ID has to be something other than zero or you're not allowed to use this script. That's for safety reasons uh, because there's some things in the script where I specifically uh, do things to the dollar sign users dollar sign home directory and for root you know his home directory is actually the root directory and that's not where i want to be playing around in i want your user you know I, my user in my case is dt i want to be in dt's home directory which is at slash home slash dt so if you run this as root you're not going to be in slash home slash you know name of user you're actually going to be in the root directory doing things and i don't want that to be the case so i check first if you are the root user if you're not then uh you're good if you're the root user it's going to warn you rerun the script not as root and then we sync the repositories and install the dialog program if it's not already installed and what we're going to do we're going to echo out syncing the repos and installing dialog if not installed then we're going to run the pacman command to sync the repositories and install dialog and if there's an error syncing the repositories of course we're going to get an error returned the next thing is this little bash function is very simple. This is a function for errors. So we call this function error. And what it does is if there's an error, it prints out the message error, all caps, colon, and then whatever the error message is going to be. Then the next is our welcome message. So next is the dialog box, the actual graphical dialog box is going to appear and it's going to give you a welcome message telling you exactly what DTOS is. It's also going to tell you that you will need sudo privileges at some point during the script. It'll ask for a sudo password once it gets to the point where it wants to install software. To install or remove software, of course, you always have to have sudo privileges. And remember, we didn't run the script as root. So that's why we have to enter passwords along the way during the script. And it's going to warn you, stay near your computer because the script does take a while to run. We're going to install a lot of software, and some of the software takes a while to build and compile. Doomy Max especially. Doomy Max is going to take, I don't know, about 10 minutes or so to install just by itself. And once you get past the welcome message, you get another dialog box basically warning you that the DTOS installation script is currently in public beta testing, meaning, hey, I've given you this script. You're free to run it. But please don't try this on a production machine. It is strongly recommended that you try this out either in a virtual machine or on a test machine. Don't put this on your main production machine, because if there's a major error that could you know, potentially hose your system, I don't want to be responsible for it. So I'm giving you this. This morning and then I give you a last chance here where you can either exit out of the script or begin installing DTOS. The next thing we need to do is we need to add our custom repository. So DTOS, even though it's basically just a post installation script, this is kind of the precursor to almost being its own Linux distribution. I maintain my own repositories of software and my repository of software is DTOS-Core-Repo. And we need to add that to the slash Etsy slash pacman.com file. That's your pacman config file. So that's what we're doing here in this add repo function. And then the next section is adding key servers to gpg.com. So all of my packages for dtos-core-repo are signed by me and you need my keys. So that's what we're doing. We're going to add uh, the key servers that are my keys are located at and that way you're able to actually install all of my packages. And then you need to run these pacman-key commands to actually receive and locally sign 
my key, the key that I signed all of my packages with, so Pac-Man trusts that, you know, these packages are okay to install. Next is actually installing all of the packages. And what we're going to do is we're going to run the command sudo pacman space dash dash needed, meaning only install them if they're not already installed. If they're already installed, just skip dash s for install and then dash, meaning install all of these from the package list. You see, we've got the uh, left pointing chevron there. That is basically we're going to source this list list of packages at packagelist.txt and let me show you that list here and let me zoom in this is packagelist.txt I'll just scroll down it a little bit it's mainly just standard stuff that if you were doing like a base Arch Linux install things you would probably want uh, for example we did the Alacrity terminal which is part of my desktop I'm also going to install dmenu my dm scripts various DTOS packages these are config files config files for bash conky fish uh, some local bin scripts that I have have open do as if you want to use do as rather than sudo uh, sxiv which is our image viewer xmonad and xmobar of course x resources because some of the programs on the system require the x resources file for theming and i've got that packaged up and then i have a x wallpaper config file as well because that is actually going to set our wallpaper inside dtos some other things that get installed are very important like the cups print server if you install a printer for example again if you're doing this on things like Manjaro or Arco you know all of all of these basic packages are going to be there but I'm also you know for those of you that do this on a vanilla arch install I want to make sure that you guys get started with a pretty good base set of packages uh, element desktop that is a chat client that's my matrix client I have a matrix server I don't hang out there very often but I did want to give you guys a way to chat with other people that may also be using DTOS and maybe you could get support there. Of course, we're going to install Emacs. EXA is our LS alternative. You guys have seen me open a terminal and do LS, and you get this nice, colorful output with a lot of nice information. We're going to install the fish shell. We're going to install this patched version of libxft called libxft-bgra. I actually maintain that myself in my DTOS-core repo. LX session will be our session manager. We're going to have MAME for taking screenshots, MPV for a video player. NeoVim will be installed because not everybody wants to use Doom Emacs. Some of you guys will want to use Vim, so I'm installing NeoVim. Uh, Panda, Paru is a UR helper, PC man out Vim, of course, would be a graphical file manager. Starship will be the prompt and all three shells that get installed. So Bash, ZSH, Fish, all will use the Starship prompt. And of course, I'm installing various fonts. Some of them I'm packaging myself. And then a lot of the Xorg stuff and the Xmonad stuff as well. And of course, we're going to install some video drivers, especially. We're just going to install uh, all these video drivers, QX. Intel, AMD, and Nuvo, uh, depending on what graphics card, or if you're installing this inside a virtual machine, I want to have everybody covered. So that is the package list.txt. It's going to install all of those. And then I've got this section here, this find command. It's going to find your home directory.local slash bin. Let's find all the files in there because I've got some scripts that are going to be installed there. And I want you to chmod them to 775, make them executable. Now, I just noticed that this is not further along in the script the way it needs to be because uh, just installing that package, which is DTOS local bin, which is going to contain those scripts, those scripts have not been moved to local bin just yet. So this is actually in the wrong spot. I need this to be moved. Uh, down here where it says con copy configs over from slash Etsy slash DTOS into home. So I need to wait until I move everything over into the home directory. And then what I need to do is then change those permissions. So let me uh, do a bash source code block here. See, right here on camera, I'm finding errors. And this is why this is going to be a public beta, by the way. Let me go ahead and write that. And let me go ahead and export that to DTOS.sh. Now let me go back up to where we were in the script. So we were at uh, installing the packages from the package list. And then the next thing it's going to do is it's going to install Doom Emacs. Doom Emacs, you actually have to do a git clone from the Doom Emacs uh, GitHub repository and then run the installation. That actually takes a while. It's got to build some things from source. And then uh, the section we were just at, copy configs over from slash Etsy slash DTOS. So what I was initially thinking about doing I was thinking about all of my DTOS dash name of package scripts, which are just my config files. I was going to place all of those in slash Etsy slash scale. 
That's typically the directory you place those things in. But if you're doing this on anything other than vanilla Arch, that could be a problem because Manjaro, Arco, and probably Endeavor and Garuda and all these other Arch Linux based distributions, they actually use slash Etsy slash skill. So I'm trying to install stuff in that directory and I was trying to overwrite packages that were already there. For example, Manjaro has its own bash RC in slash Etsy slash skill. And that file is actually owned by a Manjaro package called, I think it's called Manjaro dash bash RC is the name of the package. So I can't have DTOS dash bash RC and install it to that same place because that file is already owned by one of Manjaro's own packages. So to solve this problem, what we had to do is I'm just, I scrapped the idea of using skill and I'm going to install all of my configs to slash Etsy slash DTOS because of course that won't exist and we won't you know, have the problem of overriding uh, packages that are owned by Manjaro or Arco or whatever distribution you may be installing this on. And then the next part is basically just a safety backup. If you're doing this on uh, an existing uh, installation, for example, if you didn't take my advice and you're not doing this on a test machine or in a virtual machine, I did want to like take your .config folder and back it up because I'm going to overwrite everything in the .config folder with all of my configs, right? I'm going to move all everything that gets installed to slash Etsy slash DTOS actually eventually gets moved to the user's home directory, most of it in home slash dot config and I don't want to just overwrite all of your custom configs if you happen to have some so I'm gonna make a backup of your config directory before I overwrite everything in it then we make local slash bin executable all the scripts in that then I copy over some pacman hooks now these pacman hooks they're anytime you do an update with pacman and it doesn't update to either xmonad or any Haskell library. What it does is it, it will all automatically trigger a xmonad space dash dash recompile because xmonad has to be recompiled anytime there's an update to xmonad itself or to the Haskell libraries. So just to automate that process. So because I know a lot of you guys will be brand new to xmonad and you're you're going to do a sudo pacman syu you're going to update haskell or update xmonad and then you're going to try to log back in and you're not going to be able to log in the window manager will just crash and you guys won't know oh i needed to recompile so i automate that process for you you should never have to think about it and then the next part of the script we're actually going to recompile xmonad because we just installed xmonad earlier and I, I made a note that i'm not sure if this is needed or not but i'm going to go ahead and force a xmonad recompile just in case and then part of my xmonad configs is this xmonad ctl script that is also in my .xmonad uh, config folder. It needs to be compiled too because it's written in Haskell. So I compile that script for those that want to use it. And then I have this section that I just added this morning. I'm actually not sure if this is going to work correctly or not. We'll see in just a minute. But set the default user shell. So we have this PS3 prompt set default user shell. And then I have this array. Fish, bash, zsh, and quit. Select choice in shells in the shells array. So you're going to get fish, bash, zsh, and quit as options. And if you type fish, for example, in the set default user shell prompt, what it's going to do is it's going to change your user's default shell to fish. And then it's going to echo out that fish has been set as your default user shell. Logging out is required for this to take effect because when you change shells with the chsh command, it doesn't immediately take effect. You actually have to log out and log back in for this to take effect. And it's going to do the same thing whether you choose a fish, bash, zsh. And of course, if you choose quit, it should just exit out it probably will kill the script if you choose quit so i probably uh i'll test that out but i probably don't want that to actually exit uh, we'll see and then of course the asterisk is anything that's not one of the four options so if you type something that doesn't match bash zsh fish or quit what it's going to do is just echo out that you uh, typed an invalid option and then at the very end, you get one more dialog box saying that, hey, you just finished the installation of DTOS. Now you need to log out of your current desktop environment or window manager, if you were in one, and choose Xmonad from the login manager. Enjoy. That is the DTOS script. And let me write this because I did make some minor adjustments. And I'm going to go ahead and push this to my GitLab. So I'm actually going to CD into my DTOS uh, directory here. I'm going to do it git add dash u git commit. And I'm going to say, I'm not sure what I did. I, I fixed some errors. I know it's not a great uh, commit, but I'm 
I forget exactly what I changed in this, but all right, we've pushed that. So now what I want to do is I'm going to go to this desktop here and I'm going to see if I can launch Vert Manager. And I think I've got some clean uh, Manjaro VMs here. So I've got this one here of Manjaro KDE. And I don't think I've done anything to this VM. I think it's just Manjaro KDE edition with no changes. And let me actually see if I can run the DTOS script and it actually works. So let me log in here. All right, and this is Manjaro KDE. Let me shut some things down. I know it's gonna it's gonna launch uh, Yaquag. It's gonna launch Pemac because it's gonna search for updates and some other stuff. And I don't want any of that stuff to actually run. Let me open up a terminal and let me uh, zoom way in here. Uh, let me get rid of those extra characters there. Now the first thing I want to do is I want to do a git clone https colon slash slash uh, gitlab.com slash dwt1. So that's my gitlab slash dtos is the name of the dtos repo. And it's going to clone that. I've got to give it a username and I also have to give it a password because right now this is a private repository. Uh, by the time you guys watch this video though, it should be a public repository so you guys won't need my name or my password to do this. And then let me ls and you can see I have a DTOS directory now. So now let me cd into that and do an ls and you see the DTOS dot sh that is the shell script that we need to execute now it's not executable because we haven't changed it to be executable what you need to do to make it executable is chmod space plus x for executable space and then dtos dot sh uh, let me kill pamac here it's trying to run that update and i don't want that to run while we're doing what we're doing with this script because the script will need uh, pacman privileges and they'll conflict here so now that we've uh, done the git clone, we've made DTOS, the script, executable, let's go ahead and run it and let actually see if it runs. And the very first thing, it says syncing the repos and installing dialog. You remember that part of the script? So uh, give it your sudo password. So that way it can run the sync and install dialog if it's needed. Dialog is needed in Manjaro. Manjaro does not install it by default. And it's syncing the repositories. This is actually taking a minute here and then of course we get the dialog box so we install dialog and then the script continues and the very first screen is the dialog screen that tells us exactly what DTOS is all you need to do here is just hit enter and then the next screen stay near your computer and the script is not allowed to be run as root but we're, we didn't run it as root so continue and then one final warning this is a public beta and you should probably try this out in either a virtual machine or on a test machine okay should we begin installing dtos so you could exit if you decided to to back out but i'm going to begin installation all right so we got an error like almost immediately so that means something is wrong with the script let me see if i can figure out what is wrong with the script so i'm going to go into dtos.sh and I know the script was actually working, like it was completing everything just fine. The only thing, only major change I did was this here. I recently added this section here. I wonder if I just delete that and rerun the script. So that was the change shell, uh, change the default user shell portion of the script. And just to verify that that might have been what was causing the error, and it was, because now it actually would complete. So uh, let me cancel that. So what I want to do is I want to actually go back uh, to my main production machine. So let me get out of this VM and go back to the script, because the script obviously is broken. And the part that is broken is uh, this section here. Uh, going back to the section that's causing the problems, which is changing the default user shell, in my case statements, I did have the choices, fish, uh, bash, zsh. I had these wrapped in double quotes before, and I'm pretty sure that that sometimes can cause a problem in a case statement. So I removed those quotes, because other than that, nothing about this code looks like there's any errors. Uh, Emacs is not complaining about anything and Emacs will complain if there was a actual error in the bash uh, code itself so yeah I'm not sure but I went ahead and saved this and uh, re-uploaded it to my GitLab so let me go back to the VM 
So now what I'm going to do is to get the new script, I need to CD back in the home directory and I need to remove the DTOS directory. And now let me go back to the git clone command that we ran earlier and download the updated script and see if that is actually going to work for us. And then CD into DTOS and then once again chmod the DTOS script. I'll just up arrow to find that and then let's see if the script runs now. Give it your sudo password so it can sync the repositories. We get the welcome screens. I'm just going to uh, quickly get through all of that and that was actually the error. So a very simple error. A very easy one to make in bash scripting. The case statements Make sure your options in the case statements don't have the double quotes wrapped around them. So uh, before I continue with the script and act actually answer yes to this question, I just want to scroll back up because a lot of things happen really fast. The first thing it did was it added DTOS core repository to our Pac-Man conf. It added our key servers to the gpg.conf. It uh, locally signed my personal uh, key for my packages. And then once it added all of that, it did a sync of the repositories and it's going to start installing some of our software. Some of the software is in the DTOS-core repository. That's why we had to take care of all of this first before we install the software. And then it's going to ask this very important question. Do you want to remove libxft and uh, in instead install libxft-bgra? You want to answer yes to this. So you must answer yes to that. The rest of it, there's going to be some other conflicts. You can choose yes or no, whatever you want to do. I'm just going to choose yes for everything here. And now it's actually going to install the rest of the script. This could take a while because just uh, Xmonad and Haskell and all the stuff we're installing, Emacs and everything, uh, the various Rust programs like EXA and Paru, some of this stuff it will take a while. There's probably uh, 300 packages or so that have to install. Actually, it gives us a total. 341 is the number of packages that are going to install. That does not include Doom Emacs itself, which again, Doom Emacs by itself will probably take 10 minutes just to install. So I'm actually going to pause the video because this is going to take a while. I just noticed Manjaro does not do the uh, concurrent downloads. It's only downloading one package at a time. So that's you know, that's something we probably should warn people that, hey, check your pacman.conf and make sure it's doing the concurrent downloads. That way it's downloading, you know, four or five programs at a time instead of just one, because that really speeds things up. But I'm not going to cancel this. I'll just let it go as is. So I'm actually just going to pause the video uh, while this happens. There's no reason to wait 10, 15 minutes for these 341 packages to download. Once it gets toward the end, I'll start the recording again. And it's still uh, downloading and installing packages, again, kind of slowly because Manjaro is not using parallel downloads. But one thing I did notice of uh, packages that are installing as part of my package list, SDDM is the login manager that I chose. Now I could have chose any login manager, but SDDM is typically the one that's used with Plasma, but you can use it with any desktop environment or window manager. I just wanted to let you guys know about that. So if you're installing this like on a vanilla Arch system that doesn't already have a login manager, SDDM is the one that's gonna be installed and that's the one that you're gonna to wanna to enable. And I'm going to assume that if you're installing Arch Linux, you know how to enable your login manager, in this case, SDDM. Just check out the SDDM uh, page in the Arch Wiki for more information on that. All right, we're getting near the end of the 341 packages that needed to be installed. Um, and now it's checking the keys and the key ring. And so it finished the download. Now it's actually going to install those 341 packages. Uh, this should go rather quickly. A problem isn't the installation as slow as far as Pac-Man. The problem was downloading <laughs> the packages from Pac-Man was slow because they didn't have the, the parallel downloads set. So anybody that has a rather decent internet connection, make sure in pacman.com you set parallel downloads to equal four or five or six. So that way it downloads several packages at a time, you know, four packages at a time instead of just one. It drastically speeds up uh, Pac-Man installations. All right, now that it finished installing all the packages from your the standard Arch repositories and also the DTOS core repository packages. The last thing to install is Doom Emacs and how it has to install Doom Emacs. It has to do a git clone and then it has to actually run Doom install. There's going to be a couple of yes or no questions that you will have to answer along the way. Just answer yes to both of them. The Doom Emacs installation, again, this is going to take probably about 10 minutes. 
At the very beginning, it asks you a yes or no question. Answer yes. And then toward the end, it will also ask you one more yes or no question about installing icons and emojis, something like that. Answer yes to that as well. And it's still building Doom Emacs, although I think it's getting close to the end. It's cloning org, so it's going to build org mode, which I think is one of the biggest things it has to do. And it's also uh, toward the end of the installation of Doom Emacs, if I remember correctly. Let me go ahead and uh, open the uh, file manager. So I'm going to move this terminal. Can I move it to half the screen? I guess not. I can't get it to... Maybe I'm just not in the center. No. Anyway. Well, I'll just manually resize it. I don't want to kill the terminal though, but anyway, what I wanted to do is I wanted to pull up Dolphin here because I wanted to go uh, into the root file system because after Doom Emacs finishes and it's closed because it's asking the last yes or no question, I'll wait just a second. I'm going to go into slash Etsy and has it created the DTOS directory? It has. I wanted to show you guys earlier when it was installing all of our software, a lot of packages in the DTOS core repository start with DTOS dash, part of the name. For example, DTOS dash bash, all it does is places a bash RC file in slash etsy slash DTOS. That's all it does. Uh, DTOS dash ZSH, what does it do? It places a ZSHRC in slash etsy slash DTOS. Basically, think of this as a uh, you can almost think of it as a home directory. What this does is eventually we place all of our config files that typically would go in home, and later we're going to copy the entire slash etsy slash dtos directory over to the user's home directory. That way all the config files get placed where they need. So I just wanted to show you guys that. Let me go ahead and answer the uh, yes answer to that question as far as installing all the icon fonts. And then finally, again, it moved all of this stuff to the home directory. Of course, there was no output really to see from that. It compiled or recompiled Xmonad just to make sure everything was good. And then finally, uh, we need to choose our user shell, set the default user shell enter number. So you don't actually have to type fish bash zsh or quit. As a matter of fact, I don't think it will allow you to. If I typed, for example, fish, I think it would just complain. You actually have to type one on the keyboard. And again, give it a root password because you need root privileges to change the shell. And it says, fish has been set as your default user shell. Logging out is required for this to take effect. And then it asked uh, set shell number again. Uh, well, I don't want to do that. Yeah, so I'd have to kill the, the script. Now, the good thing is that is the very end of the script. If I go back, you can see, let me... Go back to my main production machine. We were at the very end. There was only one more thing after setting the default user shell, and that's the message stating that the installation is complete, <laughs> basically saying, hey, you just installed it. So we're actually done, but still, I want an exit message or, you know, <laughs> the installation completed. All it did was when we uh, did this, it ran the change shell command. It changed our default user shell to fish. It echoed fish is now your default shell, logging out is required for this to take effect, but then it tried to run this again. I guess because I, sh maybe I should have just told it to exit the script after that. Maybe I should just go ahead and make this the exit message and then ex exit the script. I think that's what I'm going to do. I'll just get rid of this and just make this part of the case statement here. So I'll clean that up off camera as soon as I'm done recording this video. So that's how I'm going to do that. But again, even though it didn't quite execute the script all the way to the end, the only thing we missed was the exit message, which should have told us you need to log out of your current desktop environment or window manager and log into Xmonad. So that's all we need to do at this point. So let's actually see if this works. And then we need to choose Xmonad. Here, so Xmonad did get installed. Give it your password. And everything looks exactly the way it should look. Let me open my terminal. Alacrity is working. Uh, the shell color scripts is working. Fish is our default shell because it's complaining about fish. Uh, what is it complaining about? Probably something in the fish config. Let me see if I can figure that out. But first, let me do a xrander-s 1920 by 1080 for this VM just to get a proper screen resolution. I don't know why the fish config is complaining about an error. Well, actually it doesn't. 
when I started again. Yeah, it complained about an error in that very first terminal, but after that I never get an error again. So I don't, so I actually think that was just a random glitch because I was about to say, I use my uh, my fish config obviously every day on my main production machine. I know it works, but yeah, this is, this is absolutely DT's desktop. Everything looks exactly as it should, other than the cocky that's in the center. It's actually on the left, but remember I changed the screen resolution, so that's why that's wonky. Just ignore that, but Exmo bar looks great. All the fonts that I wanted installed were installed. That's why we get our glyphs and everything here in the widgets. Trayer got installed. The script that controls Trayer got installed. Obviously, Alacrity, a fish, and the fish shell is our, our shell because if I, you know, started typing something, for example, LLS, it's not a command, right? That's why it turned from blue to red, and that's, you know, part of the fish shell. It gives you those colors. If it's blue, the command's good. good. If it's red, that means if you hit enter right now, the command will not work. EXA got installed. Now, let me close all of that. Let me do Control E followed by E to launch Doomy Max. Now, Doomy Max. It's not working. I think what you have to do is do a Doom Sync after you install Doom Emacs. That's something I may need to add to the script. And now if I do Control E followed by E, yeah, it just does not want to run Doom Emacs for some reason with the key binding. It'll run it from the command line. What I could do is vim dot xmonad slash xmonad.hs. I just want to see the startup hook here in xmonad. Did it actually launch the Emacs server? I'm pretty sure I have that. Yeah, it launches the Emacs daemon, so it's running. All right, guys, I, I discovered the problem here. The problem is not Doom Emacs. The problem is the key binding that I'm using to launch Doom Emacs only works with my customized Doom Emacs config because I'm trying to launch a uh, Doom Emacs and uh, my customized dashboard, which if I go back to my host machine, uh, let me go here, actually let me go to an empty desktop. What it's trying to do is my customized dashboard, which does not exist in standard Doom Emacs, which is what we installed, just vanilla Doom Emacs. So <laughs> the problem is my key binding. So I actually need to fix this in the Xmonad config that you guys are going to get when you install DTOS, I need to make sure that this key binding is actually correct because right now, obviously, it's broken. So overall, it looks like the installation script does work. It installs all the packages. Uh, some of the config files are a little buggy. <laughs> so I need to fix that Xmonad key binding. I'm probably going to find a few more. You guys are probably going to find a few more. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and make the DTOS repository, the script itself, the DTOS TOS installation script. We're going to go ahead and make it public. You guys can download it and try it yourself just like I just did. Again, I recommend you guys not to do this on a production machine. Try it in a VM because obviously it's got some bugs, right? Try it in a virtual machine. Go download any Arch-based distribution such as Manjaro or Arco or whatever it is you want to use and give it a spin and report back to me. Let me know ways I can improve it, ways we can tweak it. Now before I go, I want to thank a few special people. I want to thank the producers of this episode. Gabe James Mitchell, Paul Scott West, and Kami Alan, Chuck, Commander Angry, Diokai, David, Dylan Gregory, Heiko Lee, Maxim, Michael, Mike, Nitrix, Arian, Alexander, Peace Arch, Vador, Polytech, Raver, Red Prophet, Steven, and Willie. These guys are my highest tiered patrons over on Patreon. Without these guys, this episode about the public beta launch of DTOS, this wouldn't have been possible. The show is also brought to you by each and every one of these ladies and gentlemen as well. All these names you're seeing on the screen, these are all my supporters over on Patreon because I don't have any corporate sponsors. No corporation's going to sponsor DTOS. You guys sponsor DTOS. If you like my work and want to support me, please subscribe to DistroTube over on Patreon. All right, guys. Peace. And a Qtile edition is coming soon.